The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air! Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us once again this week. Uh, we are going to be concluding our study of Greasy Grace, Don't Slide In, this week on the Word of Faith Netcast. So let's go directly into that message. This is the conclusion of the message, because I want to get the maximum amount of time for that message here on the Netcast. See, here's the thing about commandments. The Greasy Grace crowd hates the word commandments. They don't want to hear about keeping commandments. But it's because they have a bad attitude about the word commandment. Now I'm going to read you something that I think you'll find really interesting about this word commandment. It is the Greek word entole. It's the transliteration. Transliteration is E-N-T-O-L-E, -E, if you're making notes. Pronounce entole. It means an injunction, that is, an authoritative prescription. Now, here's the truth about the word commandment. If you are sick, and you go to a doctor, and you present the symptoms to him, and he looks at your symptoms and says, you have whatever, take this prescription to the drugstore, get it filled, take this medicine according to the instructions on the bottle, and you will be cured. Now, here's the question for you. Is that prescription bad? No. As a matter of fact, you went to the doctor to get the prescription so you could go to the drugstore and get the drug to take it and get healed, right? So that means the prescription had to have been good. Now here's the other thing about this definition, if you look at it closely. It says authoritative description, a prescription. There are prescriptions, I'll tell you this as a, as a naturopath, okay? One of my doctorates is in naturopathy, and naturopathic medicine or teaching, it's really not medicine in the classic sense, but teaching in front of naturopathy is, is that God designed us to be well, okay? And he gave us certain things in the natural world, like herbs and foods, that will help us and benefit us, okay? That's what naturopathic say, uh, says, naturopathic practice. The kind of practice that regular ordinary doctors that you go down the street and see are, is allopathic. Okay, that's another term. And basically, the, an allopathic practitioner, he wants to find what's wrong with you, name it, identify it, and then come up with some type of treatment that will treat that named condition. He's really more interested, in, and please understand what I'm about to say here, he's more interested in the disease than he is in the patient because that's what he wants to identify. I'm not saying he's not compassionate. I'm not saying he doesn't want to help the patient. Do not misunderstand me. I'm saying his goal is to identify the disease. That's his goal. That's what allopathic teaching says to do in medicine. Now, unfortunately, they find things wrong that aren't wrong. They identify it incorrectly. They give you a prescription that is not valid for your condition, and you suffer the side effects of the prescription and don't get healed from the disease. That can happen. Matter of fact, in Jesus' day, there was a woman, if you remember, who suffered many things and many physicians, was nothing better but rather grew worse. Well, she went to an allopathic doctor. <laughs> okay, okay, that was, that was a cheap shot. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you can get a bad prescription. But notice the definition here doesn't say just prescription. It says authoritative prescription. It comes from a higher authority. Who's the higher authority? God. Does God, now let me just ask it this way. Do you think God knows what's best for us? Duh, yeah. 
<laughs> I think he does. So do you think he gives us commandments just to make our life hard? No. Matter of fact, there's nothing in the Bible that indicates that God wants to make his children's lives difficult. Right? Isn't that what redemption's all about? So now here's the thing. An authoritative prescription should be a good thing. I should not be rebelling against an authoritative prescription if my thinking's straight. Did you get that? It's another meditation point. <laughs> Sail a moment here. Because people who reject commandments want to get out of doing the Bible. People, I'm going to say it again, <laughs> people that reject commandments want to get out of doing the Bible. Why, Dr. Bill? Because it chafes their lifestyle. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go to church. I want to go play golf on Sunday. Why? Because your flesh wants to. Why? Because your flesh wants to. So what's Greasy Grace folks involved with? They're involved with flesh. They're flesh oriented. They're it's all for me oriented. I want my car. I want a nice car. I want a nice house. I want my family blessed. Don't care about anybody else. Lord, give it all to me. And oh, by the way, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to confess the word. I don't have to do anything. You just give it to me. Rain it down on me like ripe cherries off a tree. What does Brother Hagin say about that kind of thinking? And it doesn't work that way. The ripe cherries off the tree don't work. Or ripe apples, or ripe any other kind of fruit. <laughs> All right, let's keep reading here. We know that we love the children of God and that we love God when we do what? Keep his authoritative prescriptions or commandments. For this is the love of God. Hold on now. Now, now wait a minute. Greasy Grace folks say, we love the Lord. We love the Lord. Well, that's great. How do I know you love the Lord? Bible says here, we know that we love God because we keep his commandments. Oh, no, 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 Dr. Bill, I don't want to keep commandments. Well, then guess what you don't love? You don't love God, you don't love the Bible, you don't love the Word. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Do you see how this starts to get kind of serious? Because it gets over into flesh, and flesh will always get in the way of your spiritual growth. There's a quote right there. Flesh will always get in the way of your spiritual growth. All right, let's keep reading. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not what? Grievous. Oh, my goodness. Somebody write that up in the sky on, you know, with a, one of those planes in big, giant cloud letters. Have you ever seen one of those? We had a, a plane come through High Point during the furniture market toting one of them big signs. I thought that was kind of cool. I hadn't seen one of those in a long time. And you usually don't see those except down at the beach. But he's came through pulling one of those signs. I wish they'd get a sign and put this up. The commandments of God are not grievous. Now, grievous, that's a little blind to some people, unless they're Star Wars fans and know about General Grievous. That's a joke. <laughs> Maybe not a good one, but anyway. The Greek word here for grievous is baruse. Don't you love Greek words? B-A-R-U-S, pronounced baruse. And it means weighty, burdensome, grave, heavy. See, this is the way the Greasy Grace crowd views commandments. They're burdensome, they're weighty, they're heavy, they're grave. Oh, Dr. Bill, I don't want to do a commandment, it's hard. No, it's not. The Bible says God's commandments are not weighty, burdensome, grave, or heavy. Now, am I going to believe you, or am I going to believe God? 
The Bible says the commandments of God are not grievous. They're not hard. They're not burdensome. The only way then that they can be burdensome is if your attitude's wrong. If you are in a flesh orientation and only want to have your flesh pampered. Because there are times that you will do commandments and your flesh will be grieved, but your spirit will be going, Hallelujah, I'm free. Mm. Verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Overcometh the world. The world teaches overcome, occupy Wall Street, whatever. The world says you don't have to do anything. Just sit back and forget it. Smoke your joint, have some sex, enjoy. See, that's the world. We overcome the world. Whew. And his commandments are not grievous whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory. It's right back here on the wall. This is the victory that overcometh the world system. Woo. Even our faith. See, the greasy grace crowd didn't want to talk about faith. It's all grace. Grace, 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 grace. Because of grace, I don't have to have faith. Because of grace, I don't have to confess the word. Because of grace, I don't have to do anything. Whew, I'm set free. Listen, folks, I read a person. I'm going to say something right here. It's going to make me mad. Probably shock a few of you. There's a lady who went to this church, was here for years. I knew her personally well. Knew her family. She listened to all the word taught, same as I did, and could teach it herself. Matter of fact, she had a Bible study, and she taught herself the word of God. Okay? This lady wrote in Facebook not too long ago. Actually, it's been almost a year ago, maybe. But she wrote, oh, I'm so glad I now have a revelation that I don't have to do the word anymore. I don't have to do the Bible anymore. I don't have to confess. i have always had to worry about my confessions. Am I making my confessions? I don't have to worry about that anymore. All I have to do now is just enjoy life because I don't have to do anything. She'd fallen into Greasy Grace Doctrine. And now is fully committed to Greasy Grace Doctrine. And is getting further and further out and squirrelier and squirrelier. Because as you start sliding down that creek bank, you get faster and faster and faster and muddier and dirtier from false doctrine. Now, I'm not talking about somebody that went to some Baptist church. I'm not talking about somebody that went to some weird cult church. They went to Faith and Victory Church. They heard the good word of God. And now they're saying, I'm so glad I don't have to confess the Bible anymore. I'm so glad I don't have to operate by faith anymore. Oh, it's so good to have a revelation that we don't have to do anything. I tell you, as a teacher, that hurts me to the core. Much less being concerned about their soul. See, that's the thing about being pastor, Pastor Ed, bless his heart, that's got to be hurting him because he is given charge over us as pastor. I'm a teacher, you know. I hit you with the word and leave. <laughs> that's, to me, that's one of the great things about the anointing of being a teacher. Yeah, hit them with a word, you leave. You're done. That's why I'm not a pastor, and when I pastored, was not a pastor. <laughs> Believe me. Whew. But I heard, I read this person say this, and said it in such a way as though they were proselyting Greasy Grace, trying to get people to understand, you don't have to do this anymore, folks. That's why they wrote it. And all these people came after and made all these comments. Oh, yes, it's, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. I don't want to do anything anymore. Man. Mm. Anyway, let's keep reading. We'll finish up. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. All right. I wanted to show you that. These are authoritative prescriptions. Now let me read you a few verses of Scripture here. John 14, 13. We love this Scripture. Oh, we love this Scripture. John 14, Gospel John, 
chapter 14, verse 13. And whatsoever you will ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Oh, we love that scripture. What does the next scripture say? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Oh, I love that scripture. What does the next scripture say? If you love me, keep my commandments. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Bill, why'd you have to go and spoil my fun? Well, see, that presupposes that the commandments of God are grievous, and they're not. The reason he said keep my authoritative prescriptions is because if you keep the authoritative prescriptions, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. That's good. Therefore, it's to our advantage to keep the commandments. Wow. Hallelujah. John 14, 21, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. Okay, so I have your commandments, Jesus, and I'm going to keep them. What about that? He it is that loveth me. What? I love Jesus if I have his commandments and keep them? They're authoritative prescriptions. Yeah, it's, it's a beneficial thing. He that loveth me shall be loved to my Father. I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Next verse, 22. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, and he will keep my words. He will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That means he's going to come and live inside us. Hallelujah. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. Hello? He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. Now, 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 hold on. If I don't keep the sayings, if I don't do the commandments, I don't love Jesus. Is that not what he said? Yes, that's what he said. All right. And the word which you... Now listen, this isn't his opinion. Now, if it was his opinion, I'd still believe it because he's Jesus. But that's not, he didn't say it that way. He said, the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. I'm just reporting to you what God said. It'd be like what I said a while ago when I said, that's not Dr. Bill saying it, that's the word saying it. Jesus says, it's not me saying this, it's the Father. Are you getting this? You see how far off this stuff has gotten? Let's look at John 15, 9. As the Father hath loved me, I have loved you. Continue thee in my love, verse 10, if ye keep my commandments. Ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. All right, 1 John 2, 3. I'm going to get through these real quick. 1 John 2, 3. Hereby do we know, hereby we do know that we know him, if... We keep his commandments. Hello? 1 John 2, 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, he's a liar, and the truth is not in him. Liar! And the truth is not in him. <sighs> Brother Larry, I done got to having fun now. 1 John 3.22. I'm sorry. This, this stuff is just so squirrely, it, it just gets to me. 1 John 3.22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. And we do, D-O, do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, now wait, now wait. Let, 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 let me back up. 1 John 3, 22. Whatever we ask, greasy grace folks, is it true that whatever we ask we receive of God? Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever we ask of God we receive because he's such a loving heavenly father and I love the Lord. Well, you know, that's funny. The scripture doesn't quit there. It, it, there's a comma. Let's see what's after the comma. Whatever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandments. Now, if I understand English at all and English structure, 
The only reason I have what I ask and receive it from him is because I keep his commandments. If I don't keep his commandments, I don't get it. Now, here's the thing about that. At some point, these folks that are kicking back and taking it easy and, whoo, I don't have to do anything anymore, they're going to realize that the blessings of God aren't going to be in their life because he doesn't bless lack of keeping the commandments. He doesn't bless rebellion. He doesn't bless disobedience. And so then they're going to say, what happened? See, they went from believing God and operating in faith to no longer believe in God and no longer operating in faith. And now it's falling apart for them. Well, what's the matter? It must not be in God's timing. I guess it'll all, it'll all come out in the end. Well, now you've fallen all the way back to being a denominational loser. Oh, my brother Bill, you done gone meddling. So, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You know, I like to do things that please God. I just enjoy doing that. But when I do that, guess what? Whatever I ask, I receive of him. Hallelujah. Isn't that a blessing? But that's the way it works. All right. A couple more final thoughts here. Who will be the devil's enemy at the end of time? This is a whole different way of looking at this, and I want you to get it. So, pay attention. Wake up. Who will be the devil's enemy at the end of time? Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So now, now let me get this straight, Dr. Bill. You're saying then here, according to the scripture, that the enemy of the dragon are those that keep the commandments of God. It's good company. Good company to be in. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith of Jesus. People want to throw away faith. They want to do away with the word of faith. The patience of the saints are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Hallelujah. Blessing due to keeping the commandments. Now, what does the person that got the original revelation of grace say about continuing in sin since we're under grace? Romans 6.14, Pastor read this Sunday and it, it blessed me because this is the key scripture right here. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law but under grace. There is a sound biblical grace. And we're not under the law, we're under grace. What then, verse 15, shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. That's pretty strong. This is Paul writing to the Romans here. Paul, the person that got the revelation of grace from the Father God. Romans 6, 16, know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey... His servants are ye to whom you obey, whether unto sin and death. Sin and death. These folks that think, I can live in sin because I'm under grace, I don't have to do it anymore. They are obedient to sin and death or to obedience unto righteousness. So there's our two choices, sin and death or righteousness. I'm going with righteousness. Okay? Romans 14, 23, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if they want to say, I don't have to do faith anymore, I don't have to confess the word anymore, that itself is sin. And so they're yielding themselves servants to obey sin rather than faith. Confession of the word is faith, believing God is faith, holding sound 
doctrine, holding fast to sound doctrine and holiness is faith. And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So I'm sticking with faith. I'm sticking with the word of faith. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Mm -mm -mm. I studied this and I looked at it and I thought, wow. Now the really sad thing about this doctrine, this greasy grace doctrine is, it is gaining foothold, it is going strong, and it is ripping through the body of Christ, and people are being deceived. And Jesus said himself, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? If those days were not cut short, even the very elect would be deceived. We've got a lot of elect that are being deceived on this doctrine. This doctrine is the ultimate having itching ears doctrine. That's why I am so adamant and so determined to preach the Word of God and preach against this. I'm sorry, I'm going to preach against this because it is doctrines of devils and it's dragging down the body of Christ, unfortunately, and we got a job to do in the earth and we cannot let this thing get a foothold. So as Pastor said Sunday, I love the way he put this. He is forewarning and forearming us with the word. Man, we've been getting word on this. And you've heard this tonight, the things that we study. Take this information, take this MP3 recording that's going to be posted on the web, and this video that's going to be posted on my website. Take that, refer people to it. If you don't want to say anything about it, you let me say something about it to them. But we got to get this word out to folks because they need to hear that this false doctrine is evil, it is highly detrimental to your spiritual growth, it is not the next great thing that supersedes the word of faith message. God forbid that that's the case, it simply isn't because we've already seen from the word of God tonight numerous places where this doctrine is totally, completely false. Now I did not say that the person who is teaching this is not born again, not going to heaven, any of those kinds of things. He may be just simply completely deceived, and I don't know him, don't know anything about him at all, okay? I am not judging the person, I'm judging the doctrine by the Word of God. Do you see the distinction? We are called upon to judge teaching doctrine by the Scripture I'm not saying anything against an individual human being or their personal life. I'm not in judgment over them personally. I trust they will get a hold of the Word of God and they will repent and everything gets set straight and they'll be blessed in everything that they do. I truly hope that that's Well, the case. I trust you enjoyed that message, Greasy Grace, Don't Slide In. Keep in mind that the message is available in audio form on our website at www.wfm for Word of Faith Ministries .org. and you can go to that website you can click on the link at the top of the page that says messages by Dr. Bill and you will be able to find very quickly and easily there this message where you can listen to it online or you can download the audio uh, from that netcast so I'd encourage you to go to the website and check that out and I believe it'll be a blessing to you and you can spread that message all around the world uh, and because I think it is an important message for the body of Christ to hear right now. Now you can write us at our email address which is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L -L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G and our regular mailing address, I've got a little bit of news there that post office box was closed and so if you send us some email uh, during that period of time that it was closed then uh, you may have gotten it bounced back to you. Sorry about that, that was an oversight uh, on our part and also the post office didn't notify us as they should have but we have reopened that box and it is available once again so if something was returned go ahead and send it back we'll uh, get that in our post office box. It is, as always, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. Uh, so, we'll stay on top of that, be sure it doesn't get closed, but uh, it, I just want you to know that if you sent mail to us 
and it came back and said P.O. Box closed. Now you know why. There was a little oversight there, but we got that taken care of. So join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.